multidimensional rift is one of the most important set pieces in the Final Fantasy series. It wouldn't be wrong to say that it is the reason for some of the events that happen in most of the Final Fantasy games, three characters of which are heavily involved with the interdimensional rift, Omega, Shinryu, and our good friend Gilgamesh. The rift was also shown in many forms throughout the Final Fantasy series and was a stage for Omega in Final Fantasy XIV, but it goes a lot further than just being the place where Omega tests us and by sending familiar characters to us to take our lives. More than just a setting in 14, the interdimensional rift was and still is one of the most important places to impact the Final Fantasy universe. Let us find out how this infinitely vast dimension made an impact to not just at Orzia, but to perhaps all the worlds in Final Fantasy. Let's start with the beginning. In the very first world of the very first game, a planet called World A, seriously, I did not make up that name. They just never named the very first world, probably because they were going bankrupt or something like that. I seriously think they're missing out on naming this world. I mean, they have a place in a kingdom where there's elves and they have a tombstone that says, here lies Link. So that is supposed to, I guess, mean that this kingdom here is Hyrule. Not sure. Let's go back when there were two warring factions trying to conquer one another. One was more important than the other, and they were the Lufanians. And among them was the most brilliant mind that that world had ever seen, Sid of the Lufane. This is a sort of a repeat for me since I've already explained this in past videos, but the whole dimension hopping thing started with this war. One side tried to create a monster to destroy an entire army, while the other created an advanced, ever-evolving weapon that could take on said monster. Unfortunately, one side had a bit of an accident. Sid lost control of the monster and his wife was killed in a crossfire while he and her were trying to escape. The monster saw Sid's wife as a mother figure and upon seeing her dead body, ripped a hole in time and space, jumped right through into the interdimensional rift, sucking in Sid and his other creation that was a mannequin that was brought to life. The weapon that was created by the other faction, Omega, whose sole purpose was to kill said monster, calculated the probability of it being a danger while not being in the same world. Its conclusion? To follow the monster until all traces of its being is wiped from existence. Now, you may be wondering who this monster is and why it was such a threat to all of creation, and why Omega had to follow it into the interdimensional rift. This monster, created by Sid of the Lufane, was none other than the demon of destruction, Chaos, whose encounter with a certain dragon in the rift caused it to become a sort of god in another realm. The mannequin that also follows Sid into the rift was also made into a god in order to counter chaos, all for the purpose of Sid's new experiment to see if the cycles of war can indeed change the fate of those locked in eternal combat. This mannequin being Cosmos, her sole purpose was to keep chaos in check while she was still in world A, but she failed. She also had a striking resemblance to Sid's wife, which was supposed to help tame chaos, but to no avail. Well, it was a deal of sorts. The dragon would absorb the exhausted power and memories of the losers in the conflict, while the winners continued to keep their memories while progressing through the cycle. Cosmos, the mannequin now turned god, would be the goddess of harmony, while Chaos became the god of discord, and they would fight for many cycles, the first few being the longest. Cosmos, having an affinity for harmony, chose warriors who strive for peace in their heart, while Chaos would summon those who walk the path of destruction. They would both empower their warriors with incredible power to hold their own, and for many cycles, Sid would watch over them as the side of harmony would lose one cycle after another. That is until he had enough. Sid's price for doing this experiment was to be stripped of a physical body, but gained power that was beyond the two gods who were fighting all graced by the even more supreme being that is Shinryu, the dragon encountered within the interdimensional rift. Not much is known of Shinryu, but there is a theory video out there I think is, you know, just swimming around created by a certain YouTuber. Anyway, though being an entity that traversed the interdimensional rift, it could be said that this being may just be beyond that of a god, being able to make gods himself and seemingly able to devour entire worlds. I did indeed make a video theorizing of its creation, and I still do think it may be as so, but right now we want to know much more about the rift than we do about the entities within the rift. 
You see, beyond this war, this rift connects all worlds. It's theorized that every single Final Fantasy game has a connection to the interdimensional rift, whether it's through the void, whether it's through traversing its own set of worlds, like in Final Fantasy XIV, the interdimensional rift is present. So I'm going to end the explanation here on our ultimate weapon. Omega was trying to find chaos in the rift, and along the way encountered many worlds where it left behind shades of itself to gather data and eventually would come back to it and empower itself. Meanwhile, in Sid's war experiment, which by the way is set in world B, yeah I know the, the naming of these worlds are just kind of dumb, but hey, they're the devs, they're the ones who made it. Yeah, World B, and is the setting for the city of Final Fantasy. Cosmos had given up her life in order to give her warriors a chance to not only beat the cycle, but also stop it from continuing. Sid lent his support by giving the warriors of Harmony a way into the enemy camp. By the way, not a lot of people talk about this, but in order for Chaos and Cosmos to feel confrontation between each other, the first cycle was hinted to be as though they were ruling over the world itself. Cosmos governing Harmony and Chaos governing Discord, but working together. There was even said to have inhabitants in World B, but somehow they all seem to have disappeared as time passed. Eventually, Chaos was defeated by the Warriors of Harmony, and they were all sent back to their own worlds, for the exception of the Warrior of Light, who was sent to World A many years into the future. Being a person who was created in the interdimensional rift, the Warrior of Light labored to find a purpose in World A. Still not really liking these naming conventions here, making friends and eventually becoming a hero, which is precious. Now, since Chaos was gone, what mayhaps became of his residual energy? All that chaos should have gone somewhere. Well, my viewers, it in fact went into this guy here, the guy in charge, Shinryu. The dragon took on to himself the energy of pure chaos and became even more of an unstoppable nightmare, but with this, it attracted the eyes of one Omega, who finally made its way to World B after some time of searching for chaos. Chaos was now gone, but its energy was still detected. Omega then shifted its gaze over to Shinryu and commenced its fight, but only speculated the battle between Omega and Shinryu caused a shift in reality. Omega, who had journeyed to find Chaos, found its target inside Shinryu, who was many times stronger than his primary foe. But along the way, it of course absorbed the data of every Omega shade that had been dropped out of the interdimensional rift, and with that, met its match with Shinryu. The dragon, realizing how powerful his foe was, retreated and commenced its own plan of spreading shade over the countless worlds, mimicking his foe. The golden dragon started to become stronger with each shade he absorbed, and as an added bonus, left some sort of larva version of himself within two alternate versions of World B. One of the original world where Cosmos had disappeared, but made it so that the world could sustain itself via two new younger gods, Materia and Spiritus. And then there is another version that is almost exactly like the World B with Materia and Spiritus in it, only that there were a lot more warriors that were brought into this world, and the goal for Materia and Spiritus was to give respite to the warriors, that being Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. And the former was the setting for Dissidia NT, which was a fighting game that was on the PlayStation console, and it failed, and then it went to Steam, and it still failed. I really do wish I knew how to make and mod games, because I would definitely do that with this one. Note, these versions of Shinryu are not the same original Shinryu, which currently is moving through the interdimensional rift, and you could say the same for Omega. Now, the Omega and Shinryu shades are, in essence, pieces of these powerful entities that are left behind to gather data or experience from combating powerful warriors that they come across. The shades are manifested in many ways, either through suggested cerebral manipulation via invention, which is Omega, or summon copies that Omega provide, summon larva, which becomes Shinryu, or by just plain being summoned via shade, much like how Shinryu came into existence in Final Fantasy XIV. The who's, how's, and why's are not the central focus here, just know that because of the interdimensional rift, Omega and Shinryu have appeared in several worlds both known and unknown. The length of time they've been at each other's necks is unknowable. Nonetheless, it is because of these two that we have an encounter with the interdimensional rift in Final Fantasy XIV. The Omega this time is yet another shade who wishes to gain data for the sole purpose of evolving itself. This Omega is possibly one of the most powerful yet, and again, this is not the original. But let's pay more attention to the Rift and what Omega has summoned for his experiments. 
What you encounter there can only be surmised as worlds unlike your own. Ghost trains, magic clowns, tree warlocks, even a dangerous yet familiar demon, and a glimpse to the past, yet it was an experiment created by Data from Omega, but it still was realistic enough. These arenas are all created to test you personally in the furies of battle. By using Data, it mysteriously obtained by unknown means. Let's talk a theory here. The only way Omega could have any of this data and was able to summon any of these creatures would be that it already had access to the data that perhaps another more powerful Omega, which should be traveling through the rift at this moment, had already obtained information on these other worlds. That is why I have always said that the fact that we've entered the interdimensional rift should have been looked at as something special. Entering the rift is no easy task, and venturing through it is on a whole other level of crazy. The significance of the rift may not be story significant, but it did leave the world open to many possible crossovers with a tangible reason. And now we do have a third entity that does travel through the rift. We know him, we love him, his name is Gilgamesh. This unique person of a man has been traveling through the Rift ever since he was banished into it. For those who don't know, Gilgamesh originally came from Bards' world from Final Fantasy V. He was an enemy working for X-Death as a sort of commander. However, after losing to Team Bartz four times, Gil here was sent into the Void as punishment for his losses. The Void, however, is also connected to the Interdimensional Rift, and after supposedly sacrificing himself to save the party from Necrophobe, Gilgamesh was thought to be lost forever, but he did indeed survive, and his new goal now was to defeat many strong opponents and take their weapons as his prize and many other Final Fantasies, them being 1, 4, 6, 8, not 9, not 11, 12, Revenant Wings, 13, 2, 14, 15, Type 0, Dissidia, anywhere is possible for him to show up actually, and it's believed that Gilgamesh is quite old, like a thousand years old. Just imagine walking through the interdimensional rift going from world to world for over a thousand years. Omega has shown up in Final Fantasy 1, 4, 5, 9, 12, 13, 2, 14, 15, 2 of the Crystal Chronicles, and as a summon in Dissidia and Dissidia Duo Decim, but not physically in any kind of cutscene or whatever. Plus, he's been in much of the side games. While Shinryu has been in Final Fantasy 1, for after years, 5, 9, 10, 11, 14, Type 0, Bravely Default, both portable games plus a mobile version, much more in terms of side games, and being the major antagonist in the Dissidia series, as I've already explained before. The Prime 3 here, Omega, Shinryu, and Gilgamesh, have traversed the rift for what seems to have been centuries, but who could tell? There have been many events in 14 alone that would support interdimensional travel through the rift, whether it's from other Final Fantasy characters or from another game with a host of giant monsters. The rift can just be added here for the sake of an easy story. I mean, nobody really questions why the Rathalos is over here, we just blame it on the crystal that ripped a portal through time and switched places with the behemoth which usually show up in the mountains up in Korthos, but it's either that or nobody just does the event anymore. But anyway, we got the Rathalos and they got the Behemoth, which happens to be one of their strongest fights, and you're welcome, Monster Hunter World. Well, in that case, you can ask why Noctis was here. Well, the interdimensional rift, which was torn open because of a god. And because gods in his world are actually dicks. Uh, why was Lightning here? Yeah, she showed up near the beginning of the restart of Final Fantasy XIV into A Realm Reborn, and the event of Lightning showing up was supposed to celebrate that time. Yeah, it's the Interdimensional Rift. Why was a character from Final Fantasy XI here? The Interdimensional Rift. And because a lot of people like Final Fantasy XI. Why are Yokais from Yokai Watch here? The Interdimensional Rift. And marketing. But mostly marketing. You thought I was going to say the Interdimensional Rift, didn't you? Let's be honest here, the Interdimensional Rift is basically another word for marketing. They pressed the marketing button and they brought a character from another game into here. That's why we have the Rathalos, that's why Noctis showed up, that's why Lightning showed up, that's why we have Yokais, that's why we have little cameos from Final Fantasy XI. The Interdimensional Rift is basically marketing. But without these tears in time and space, we wouldn't have such otherworldly beings visiting Eorzea. And of course, the possibilities of potential encounters like Bart's the Warrior of Light, maybe even Sora, hint hint, nudge nudge. 
I can't really take that one seriously because you gotta think about the whole king of entertainment here, Disney, who wouldn't allow that because they're stingy pricks. And guys, I don't think Sora's gonna end up in Super Smash Brothers. It's just too expensive. And we're talking about Disney. They're not gonna let Sora into Super Smash Brothers. Nor Goku. Goku is not a video game character. He's an anime character and people seem to forget that. And don't get me wrong, I won't go on with this, but I would love to see Sora and Goku be in Super Smash Brothers, but technicalities, you know? Anyway, in the end, we're talking about a place that connects not only the Final Fantasy worlds, but many other worlds from different games. It's like the fourth dimension wall has been broken for Eorzea, and anything is basically possible to pop out of that thing. With something like this, we could actually meet people that are just as bad as Kefka, Next Death, or even Chaos. We could meet the one villain I'd hope to see in 14, and maybe they'll become infamous, maybe an ultimate or a savage raid and drive people crazy. You know, someone with a really long sword and an edgy personality. You know, they, they might already be in another game that freaked the whole world out. Yeah. Wouldn't that be interesting? But hey, it won't happen unless Yoshi P decides it so. And even still, who would want this man terrorizing at Orzia? We already have Xenos. And that's it! The Interdimensional Rift is basically a mysterious place that connects all possibilities of reality. Very interesting. But I'd like to thank you for watching the video, and if you like what you saw, please leave a like, and if you're new here, please subscribe. If you have not seen my channel, I talk about a lot of Final Fantasy stuff, but I have been getting into just talking about general everyday gamer crap if you want to take a look at those. I randomly put those videos out when I get the real feel for it. Anyway. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Stay positive, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.